All right, I want to I want to um, briefly um, share a thought with us. And um, somebody said to me some time ago, uh, the person said, why are you always talking about identity, immortal identity, realities of the person of the new creation? Are there no, no other messages to preach? Are there, are there no other things to talk about? Well, there are other things to talk about. So many things to talk about. But I am not given to talking about so many things. My mission, our mission is clear. We are sent to talk about one thing. And that one thing is Christ and Him crucified. Now, we talk about our identity, our immortal identity, because you cannot behave who you don't know you are. You cannot express a life that you don't see to be your life now. You cannot manifest a reality that you have not embraced to be your reality now. You cannot express all right an ability that you see to be what you will receive someday in the future you cannot manifest power that you don't believe yet to have you can manifest power authority that you believe that is somewhere outside of you Whatever you are going to manifest in the earth as son of God must be something you have accepted to be your now reality. Mark my word, now reality. And so we talk about identity so much because your identity, the knowledge of your identity is the bringing forward of the revelation of your spirit personality i want you to know that you are a spirit you are not the male or female physical body you see with your optical eyes you are a spirit the physical body your male or your female physical body is not who you are it's not you so when we talk about identity, we are not talking about your body physique, your body makeup. We are talking about your spirit. There is a way your spirit is now because your spirit is born of God. You need to see the image of your spirit as defined by the spirit of holiness in the bible you need to see the present state of your spirit personality as defined by the spirit of holiness in the bible you need to know your spirit the knowledge of the spirit you needs to become a living reality in your consciousness <laughs> the knowledge of the spirit you it is your spirit that is called son of god it is your spirit that is called new creation it is your spirit that is called a priest after the order of melchizedek this spirit you this spirit you god wants you to know this spirit you god wants you to see this spirit you god wants you to come into the awareness into the knowing of everything that he had spoken concerning the spirit that you are your spirit the spirit you are is 
different from your male or female physical body. What image do you have in your mind, in your consciousness, to be who you are? Can you define you? Can you define you? When you are asked to tell who you are, what do you usually tell people to be who you are? When you are asked to tell people who you are, your state of being, what do you usually tell people to be who you are? Have you seen who you are as defined by God? Have you embraced the reality which God defined to be who your spirit is? He says that a spirit that is joined with Christ is one. All right? Your spirit was baptized into Christ and never came out. It's amazing. Your spirit, you know, when your body was baptized into water, for some of us who have had the experience of water baptism, when your, when your body was baptized into water, which is water baptism, right? Your body was pulled out by the person or the group of persons that buried your body into the water they buried your body and pulled your body out now it was your a man pro probably a pastor or a deacon or members of the den denomination you belong were the ones that baptized your body so they 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 buried your body inside the water and pulled your body out of the water. It was Holy Ghost that baptized your spirit. See, water baptism has nothing to do with your spirit. Water baptism is not spirit related. It is not spirit we baptize into water. We baptize body, physical body, into the water. And when you baptize body into the water, you don't leave the body inside the water. You pull the body out of the water. That same way, your spirit, baptism into Christ, is not your body. It is not your physical body that was baptized into Christ. Your body was baptized into water and was pulled out of water. Your spirit was baptized into Christ without your body. That is born again. That is new birth reality. New birth reality. Your spirit without your physical body was baptized into Christ. Just figure out or have in your memory the, 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 the experience of your body going into the water, which is water baptism, and coming out of water. When your spirit was baptized into Christ by the Holy Spirit, who took your spirit out of your body and immersed, immersed it into Christ, your spirit never came out. The same way your body came out of water when it was baptized into water. When your spirit was baptized into Christ, it did not come out. It became one with Christ. So who you are is him in whom your spirit was baptized into. Your identity is the personality in whom your spirit was baptized into. Your immortal identity is the personality of him in whom your spirit was baptized into. Because your spirit was baptized into Christ and never came out so christ is you your spirit christ is you your essence christ is you your identity christ is you the holy spirit christ is you the son of god christ is you the priest of the Most High God. 
Now, when you understand your identity, you will know that anything you do, you are doing on behalf of Christ. That will help you to stop doing some things. Whatsoever you do, you are doing on behalf of Christ. If you go steal, you are stealing on behalf of Christ. Anything you do in the earth, you are actually doing on behalf of Christ. That is the reality of your union in Him. That is the reality of your oneness in Him. That is the reality of your indivisible oneness in Him. Anything you do in the earth, when you say to somebody stupid, you are actually saying it on behalf of Christ. Because you are Him walking the earth. So whatever you do, you are doing for God. Alright? It is, it is see, God is seen to be the one doing it. Anything you do, Christ is seen to be the one doing it. That's the law that governs your marriage, your reunion with Him. The reality of that divine union in Christ, with Christ, in God, with God, in Holy Ghost, with Holy Ghost, is that anything you and I do on the earth, they are the one doing it. And anything they do, we are the one doing it. You see? So it is the knowledge of our immortal identity that will stop men and women from engaging works of the flesh. Works of the flesh, all right? God is not judging anyone based on such things, but... They are not your expressions. They are not our expressions. They are not our life flow. We carry divine life. We carry divinity. And so we are to manifest the spirit life we are and not the desires of the body that we are not. Don't forget that I said that we are spirits. We are not body. The desires of the body are not your expressions so you are not permitted to engage them you are to manifest the the desires of your spirit you are to manifest the life of the spirit you are so you are not to manifest the desires of the body you are not you are to manifest the the realities of the spirit you are you see why the knowledge of your immortality identity is very very important it's very very important this is the knowledge that puts your angels to work this is the knowledge that creates over your body prophetic climate this is the knowledge that dematerializes sickness in your body this is the knowledge that uh, that shows you your present position within the holiest of all this is the knowledge that shows you your spiritual supremacy over the universe this is the knowledge that shows you that what your spirit is not subject to does not have a legal right to affect your body so the scripture went further to admonish us to walk in newness of life it says we should walk in newness of life how do you walk in newness of life what does it mean to walk in newness of life because it's in the bible walk in newness of life be conscious of your spirit life see yourself to be one position in the earth to manifest the spirit life the moment the knowledge of your immortality identity becomes a living reality in your mind there are things you cannot do anymore it's not that you struggle not to no you just can't do them you understand the spirit life you understand expressions of man in his fallen state those expressions are not for us to engage them they are expressions of the of man in his fallen state 
works of the flesh are things Adam never did before the fall. They are things men began to do because of the fall. But who are you? You are not a fallen man. You are a new creation. So, so your environment, which is holiest of all, needs to become a living reality in your mind. Once that is achieved in your heart, supernatural expressions becomes natural to you. Supernatural manifestations becomes natural to you. Because supernatural is not something outside of you you try to engage. Supernatural is who you are as one born of God. Supernatural is who you are as one whose spirit is one with Christ. Supernatural is one who, who you are as one who is declared to be an immortal priest after the order of Melchizedek. Alright, so we have one message. We have one message. Others can have many messages. We have one message. What is our message? To reveal the outcome of the death and resurrection of Christ. After he abolished death, the scripture says that life and immortality was brought forth through the gospel or was revealed through the gospel. What is life and immortality? Is the divine nature of the creator which today is my identity which today is my life which today is my essence which today is what defines me i stopped defining myself in the light of this physical body because this is not me and that is why i don't allow the consciousness of the of the age of the body to have effect in my mind because the body realities are not what defines the spirit that I am. I define who I am in the light of the spirit that I am and not in the light of the body that I am not. This is Adamic body. This body is one with the earth, is one with the universe. All right? There are two things that are likely to happen to this body. It's either this body, all right, dies, or immortality swallows it up, which is the major manifestation of God's sons in the earth in this last day. When the immortality we are in our spirit swallows the body, the same way when you put water body inside water, which is water baptism, water swallows the body. And the, until you pull the body out, the body remains in the water. So the spirit you are, which is an immortal personality, which is immortality revealed because your spirit is Christ by nature, is expected to swallow this body. And then your immortal body will appear in the place of this. When you understand your identity, you stay away from some things. Because anything you do in the earth, the law that governs your union with Christ says that whatever you do here, God is seen to be the one doing it. Whatever you do here, Christ is seen to be the one doing it. Whatever you do here, Holy Spirit is seen to be the one doing it. See, this is the understanding that will circumcise your heart and then reconstruct your heart and make your heart to become acquainted with the realities of your immortal spirit environment. Thank you so much. I promise to be brief and I'm going to continue maybe today or tomorrow. Whenever I am uh, live on air, I believe you'll be notified. Thank you so much for joining. Stay blessed because you are the apple of God's eyes. Love you.